Action. 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 Hello? Yes, I remember that name. Has Matthew finally put an end to that ridiculous prank of his? You've reached Alan Payne, who isn't home at the moment, which means you can either leave a message at the beep or call back. Up to you. It should be a minute or two before my ride gets here. What's on your mind? None. And if what you're really asking is, am I in on his little joke? The answer to that is, absolutely, unequivocally, no. I detest practical jokes. I did not. As soon as Kyla said it would be just like Matt to disappear as a prank, I refused to join in any search for him. And when he didn't show up the next morning, I left. I did not travel all the way to Ireland to be made a fool of. Besides, nothing that I recall. Although, he did say a lot of things. Not to me, but to Kyla and that other chap, Kit. And he said them quite loudly, I might add. I'd had quite enough of the three of them and rather liked having an excuse to leave. I was fine. They're the ones who couldn't seem to get along. For instance, the evening before Matt disappeared, he and Kit had a terrible row. I couldn't make out exactly what was being said, but they both sounded very angry. Furious, I dare say. In fact, the next time I saw Kit, he was sporting a black eye. And the next morning, Matt and Kyla had a go at each other. Nothing physical, mind you, and once again, I couldn't make out what was said, but I promise you, they were quite put out with each other. I was more than happy to bid the lot of them farewell, though I imagine I'll be returning to the castle before too long. Matt is bound to find his prank as tedious as everyone else does eventually. If you mean, did I get the impression that the castle was haunted or enchanted or anything like that? No. Frankly, I was too distracted by the strange human goings-on to pay much attention to anything else. I mean, for three people who purport to be friends, it seemed to me they did an inordinate amount of fighting. For instance, I must be off. Nancy, it was a pleasure venting to you. Hopefully before too long we shall meet in person. Cheers. Yes, Nancy. Hello? This is a sales call. Hi, what's up? Nancy, this is the best party ever. Translation, Amazing Abs has talked to her twice. Hello, Ms. Drew. Hey, Nance, what's going on? Whoa, that was incredible. Hi, Nancy. Hi, Nance. How's it going? Hi, Nance. Forget something? We're right here. Something else? Hi, Nance. That was fast. The Dunhills throw the best parties. You should see all the awesome pool toys they've got. And everywhere you look, some cute guy in swim trunks is standing over a barbecue grilling something. I'm in heaven. So, what's going on with you? You wrecked your car? She gets in an accident and you're worried about some stupid rental car? Real nice, Bess. Well, Nancy's obviously okay or she wouldn't be calling. You saw a banshee? That's bad luck, isn't it? Not if you see a banshee. If you hear one, it means someone's going to die. Wait a minute. Why was it running? Can't banshees fly? How can the groom be missing? More like a pretty big moron. Just like the groom. Whoa. Incoming. Check it out. Oh my gosh. Sorry, we were hopelessly distracted by a truly amazing set of washboard abs. What do you mean, vanished? Minky McNabb's here. In all her bikini-clad, boy-crazy splendor. And when she saw Ned and didn't see you... Beeline City. Ned has wisely gone into hiding. You'll be happy to know that Minky is now in hot pursuit of someone other than your BF. So what's new with you? We would say... Why ask us when you've got your very own fortune teller right there in the great room? Right, George? There's an old Irish saying, When it looks like you might fail, go see Madame Ishabale. I know, but you get the picture. Quaint as in charming or quaint as in a borderline health hazard? You've been mixing drinks for people? Shouldn't you be doing something a little more made of honorly? About what? And Diddy? A handmade doll? That's kind of freaky. Dolls are freaky, period. Who around there would be making dolls? Let me see if I got this straight. The guy thinks disappearing less than a week before his wedding, causing cars to run off the road, and making creepy dolls is funny? Not exactly best Marvin marriage material, is he? That's kind of freaky. Dolls are freaky, period. Do you have any idea who this person is? The person who ran out in front of your car. It could be someone who knows what happened to him, though. Why am I not surprised? I don't know. Sounds like a possible love triangle to me. Love triangle, here we come. Because Kit still likes Kyler and Matt knows it. Nancy, who's read practically every romance book ever written? You or me? 
Matt knows Kit still likes Kyler, and Matt doesn't like it. End of discussion. Crows are really smart. I bet it knows where your missing groom is. How to get inside the nursery? That makes sense. I've read they're attracted to things that are bright and shiny. How to get inside the nursery? Still, it's kind of creepy that it would come inside like that. And why is it hanging around? It is not an undercover banshee, Beth. I know that, George. But be nice to it anyway, Nance. Just in case. What do you mean by special? She's getting married. I mean, what about how a bride is supposed to wear something old, something new, something borrowed, and something blue? Would you call that a silly superstition? Yeah. It's a custom, George, practiced by brides for centuries. Customs like that are what make weddings so beautiful. You're so unromantic. I always thought shoving cake into your brand new spouse's face kind of looked like fun. You're hopeless. Oh, custom written vows are so sweet. How do you know she was talking about the wedding? Maybe she was just frustrated because she couldn't put her feelings into words. Did you ask her about them? Wait a minute. You guys aren't suggesting that Kyler is behind Matt's disappearance, are you? But it is a possibility. You two are terrible. You? Nancy, clearly neither you nor Kyler understands just what a maid of honor is supposed to do. Next time, just tell him no. You should be decorating and painting nails and picking out music for the reception and dyeing shoes to match your dress. Not sheep herding. I like sheep. They're cute and woolly and help you fall asleep. George, this isn't about you, okay? Nancy, a maid of honor, should not be shearing sheep. You get to shear sheep? I am so jealous. What am I going to do with you two? Nancy, a maid of honor, should not be shearing sheep. You got to shear sheep? I am so jealous. What am I going to do with you two? Did the family tree have anybody famous in it? James Joyce? Samuel Beckett? Pierce Brosnan? Colin Farrell? What's her deal? Why doesn't she just walk up and introduce herself? Nancy, a maid of honor should not be shearing sheep. You get to shear sheep? I am so jealous. You got to shear sheep? I am so jealous. What am I going to do with you two? Hang up, Bess. They're starting. Sorry, Nance. Gotta go. They're doing chicken fights in the pool. Amazing Abs is on one of the teams. Bess, come on! See ya! Hang up, Bess. They're starting. Sorry, Nance. Gotta go. They're doing chicken fights in the pool. Amazing Abs is on one of the teams. Bess, come on! See ya! Keep in touch. Later. Call us anytime. Ta-ta! The wedding's been called off. So go on back to where you come from. Walk down the road to the inn, then. Give me your keys and I'll see to your car in the morning. She's sleeping. You cannot stay here. Go to the inn, I said. Now off with you. Deaf are you now? I told you, you cannot be staying here. Much as it shames me to admit it, no. Languages don't come easily to me. And since I am able to do what I do without knowing Italian, I'm a mosaicist. Much as it shames me to admit it, no. Languages don't come easily to me. And since I am able to do what I do without knowing Italian, I'm a mosaicist. Much as it shames me to admit it, no. Languages don't come easily to me. And since I am able to do what I do without knowing Italian, I'm a mosaicist. Much as it shames me to admit it, no. Languages don't come easily to me. And since I am able to do what I do without knowing Italian, I'm a mosaicist. Much as it shames me to admit it, no. Languages don't come easily to me. And since I am able to do what I do without knowing Italian, I'm a mosaicist. Much as it shames me to admit it, no. Languages don't come easily to me. And since I am able to do what I do without knowing Italian, I'm a mosaicist. So, you're not so keen on staying at the castle after all, then? Ready to help the band play me that ditty, are you now? Ready to play some music, then? The sheep are tucked away in the barn, then? Not quite yet. The sheep are tucked away in the barn, then? They sure are. What's on your mind, then? Now, you'll not be talking to you till I've a crow's nest in front of me. Away with you, then. Why the quick return, then? Forget something, did ya? I thought you were gone. Come to me for a bit of aid and advice, did ya? Well, I've got none to give. Not till I got the day's troubles behind me and a crow's nest in front of me. The mixmaid suddenly took ill, leaving poor Seamus on his own, running back and forth, trying to mix and serve at the same time. I ordered soon as I walked in, yet here I sit, dying of thirst. I'll do no talking till I get me crow's nest, and there's the sorry truth of the matter.
But now, were some spry and spunky lass to lend poor Seamus a hand by taking over the mixin' for a while, that would surely speed the plow. Well, when you do, don't come bothering me. Just go on over to the mixin' counter and get down to work. You make a mean crow's nest, girl. Well done. Now, I'm to tell you what happened to the Sassenach, am I? The Sassenach. The Englishman. The one Kyler was supposed to be marrying. Well, what happened to him is this. The she took him. The good people whisked him straight off to their world, they did. You'll not be hearing me call him that. All of us have a name we prefer, and with them, the good people it is. So that's what I call him, and you'd be wise to do the same. Whatever they please. He's in their world now, and he'll not be coming back. That's as much of the truth as we'll ever know. Can I prove it? Did you see him up there, lass? Does anyone see him now? Gone he is, vanished from the earth. The naught you see instead of him. There's your proof, girl. Tis not the first time the good people have seen fit to meddle in the affairs of Castle Malloy. Cause the explosion they did. Explosion? Tis not the first time the good people have seen fit to meddle in the affairs of Castle Malloy. Cause the explosion they did. The one that destroyed half the castle? Aye, the one that half destroyed the place. The man who lived there in 1944, Brendan Malloy was his name. He was a scientist, charged with making rocket fuel, people say. Only one summer night, something went terrible wrong. There was a flash, like a thousand lightning bolts. Then a huge boom sent everything south of the library, flying towards the sky. Brendan, his wife, Caitlin, used to own this place, she did. Aye, and their little girl, Fiona. All three were lost to the world forever when the place blew. But the blame lay not with Malloy. It was the good people. They'd taken a shine to Fiona, is why. And they knew that little girls, no matter how much they're adored by wee folk or mortals, sooner or later, all little girls grow up and grow old. The good people couldn't bear to see this happen to their beloved Fiona, so they made full sure it never did. They have their ways, and we have ours, is all. That's just the way of things. Got plans for you, they do. I meant to pocket your car keys for safe keeping on my way over here. But I couldn't find them. A woman, one of the good people, as alive as you and me, with wild hair almost as long as the tattered grey robe billowing up around her whenever she appears. Sometimes she takes on the form of a hooded crow. But it's the sound she makes, her terrible wailing. That strikes fear in the human heart. These ears don't work so well now. Even the pattern of rain is beginning to slip by em. But the situation being what it is, by my reckon, a banshee, you heard. Aye. Someone as in Matt? So, all of a sudden, you're an expert on banshees, are you then? Well, no, but... A banshee it was. How they know what they know, and why they do what they do are mysteries far beyond mortal solution. But be assured, lass, someone at Castle Malloy is doomed. Because when a mortal hears the wail of a banshee, it means someone is about to die. I've little use for any Sassnach, but I took a dislike into this one soon as I laid eyes on him. Arrogant he was, cocky, disrespectful, foolish, always touching things he shouldn't, going places he didn't belong. Worse than a stray dog, that one was. Aye, Kyler. She's different. She belongs here. It's in her blood. It's the reason she does not but read up in the library. She'll not be leaving Ireland, mark my words. And if she winds up marrying Mr. Foley, all the better. So, Kit, you like? Aye. He may talk like a Yank and live like a Brit, but there's Irish in the lad. I saw it right off. Little wonder he's in love with the girl. They'll make a fine pair. Well, wait a minute. Kit's not in love with Kyler. Blind, are you now? Loves her, he does indeed. He's all but wearing a sign saying so. He came to the wedding early to make sure there'd never be a wedding. Only the good people saw to that for him. Ah, the luck of the Irish. Because that room belonged to Fiona. So sweet and innocent she was. Even the good people cherished her. A heedless, slovenly Sassenach had no call to be in there. Aye, that I do. I've seen with my own eyes what goes on in there. What do you mean? No, 
Too many strange things happen in there for my liking. Such as? Things move by themselves. Something in one place one day will be in a place altogether different the next. But it's not ghosts doing the moving, mind you. Their room it is now. Something the Sassenach learned the hard way. Did you know? She, it ran across the road in front of me. That's why my car's in the ditch. Not till I was fifty and four did I see a banshee. To see one at your age, on your very first night in Ireland. A special lass you are indeed. There might be two dozen explanations for what you saw. But none, save one, is the truth. Do not be mistaken banshees for Santa Claus now. A warning is all they leave behind about something that's coming and can't be stopped. I've never been able to make heads or tails of him. Even bought me a book on Oam runes. Waste of good money, that was. Oam runes? All those lines. Ancient Celtic symbols they are. Runes. Spell out something. I lack the time and patience to work out just what. Sorry to say, I'm not in a lenden mood at the moment, lass. A wee bit of me favourite drum music would put me right. But the band can't be playing it because their drummer took sick. Looking for someone to take his place, they are. Go to it, then. One ditty is all. Play it well enough, and the book will be yours. Seamus will help you get started. That won't do, lass. You're stinking up the place, girl. After that, I'm in a worse mood than ever. The book will just have to wait, then. The shame of it is, my heart is set on hearing music, not questions. Sweet as clover to the honeybee, that was. Here's the book. Keep it as long as you like. No, you'll not soon have need of it. Will you be wanting something else from me, then? Waiting for you, sounds like. Just waiting for you. That I would. I put it there. I told the Sassnach he was not to stay in Fiona's room, yet he did nonetheless. So, while he was out with the others, I took his bags and hid him, thinking to farce him to leave her room. Wasted time, that was. Turns out the good people had something else in mind. Good at finding things, are ya? As a matter of fact, I am very good at finding things. Got something for you then. Got something for you then. Just walk the grounds, and whenever you come upon a sheep, blow a whistle, and back they'll go to the barn. When you think all ten are in, go to the barn and make sure, then lock the place up, and that'll be that. Don't be looking at me like I've got three heads, lass. You can do it. Out with you now. There's work to be done. Aye, to the sheep pen. The sheep I'm keeping on the castle grounds need bringing in so I can shear em first thing tomorrow. There's ten of em is all. With that lantern of yours, you'll be done before you know. Go on now, take it. Were you not bragging less than one minute ago about how good you were at finding things? Well, yeah, but... Then find a whistle. I knew you could do it, lass. You know how to shear a sheep, do you? Well, no, but... I need some raw wool, and I figure it can't be that hard. I'm willing to let you give it a try, but you'll not be finished till you've filled three bags. Do I have your word on it? All right, then. The book there in the barn will tell you how to operate all the equipment. Oh, and to get a sheep into the shearing station, just blow this tune on your whistle. <laughs> Anyone can learn to shear a sheep, lass. Do you promise to shear enough to fill three bags is what I'm asking. I guess so, sure. Do I look daft to you now? There's no walking across the bog. Once you fall in, there's no getting out. Who'd be making such a map then? Oi, when I was your age, younger even, there was talk of an old gypsy woman who kept house in the bog, living all by herself, crazy as could be. But a tall tale is all it was. So don't you be trusting any map, girl. There'll be no cross in that bog. Not if you're fond of living. Oi, when I was your age, younger even, there was talk of an old gypsy woman who kept house in the bog, living all by herself, crazy as could be, but a tall tale is all it was. You stay clear of that bog, girl. There be no cross in it. Not if you're fond of living. Aye, that's exactly my meaning. Taken they were. The good people want you to be staying. Read the instructions, blow the whistle, and you'll be adding sheep shearing to your list of talents in no time at all. Be careful out there, lass. Good night to you. Fine with me. Off you go, then.